Right. So in the previous video, we have derived these two equations for you, which is to relate the gas pressure to mean square speed. Because we know the faster the particle travel, the more gas pressure there is. Uh, there are two variations of this equation. The first one uh, is what we will use today. But I also would like to remind you the second one. Uh. Second one is given in the formula sheet. First one occasionally given in question. Not sure. Depend on your luck. Okay, so this one is the what we like to call the uh, pressure to root mean square equation. But you know how like we also have this other idea where we know when we add heat or we increase the temperature of the gas sample, the particle move faster. We all know this in our head, but can we show this in the equation? Well, I think if I stare at the PV equal to 1 over 3 and MC square long enough, I would think about the other equation which I use in 10.1 in ideal gases, which is PV is equal to NRT or NKT. Miss, why you use big NKT? Yeah? Because you see the first equation got a big N, which is number of particle. The second equation, the third, the, yeah, this equation also got big N. They can cancel. And I like things that can cancel. I'm for cancel culture, but for equations only. <laughs> so we're going to equate these two. PV is equal to NKT. And PV is equal to 1 over 3 and MC square. And we will simplify it and see what we get. So I will say NKT is equal to 1 over 3 and MC square. Okay, we're going to cancel the N and bring the 3 over to the other side. Okay, hmm, MC square. Please don't think of Einstein, uh, not related to Einstein. Different, uh, different. different thing entirely. Uh, please don't go there. Come back, come back. So this m is the mass of the particle. This c square is the mean square speed of the particle. Remember how we said kinetic energy is related to the speed of the particle, which is related to the temperature? This reminds me of kinetic energy, half mv squared, but we are missing a half. So why don't we add a half left and right, Miss Ellie? Put a half on one side, put a half on the other side. Ah, and this one will be the average Ke. Because there's no such thing as average mass, right? If let's say you're talking about argon gas, all the argon gas should weigh the same amount. It's the same thing. Okay, so I will get average Ke of one gas particle. Only one particle ah, is 3 over 2 Kt. Okay. Alright, kinetic energy is 3 over 2 Kt. So this is one particle. So you can see there's a first uh, inference that we can do. Kinetic energy is proportional to temperature. So if you remember, not too long ago when we talk about the thermodynamic scale and we tell you that, oh, we like the Kelvin scale because temperature is proportional to kinetic energy. Nah, 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 here lo. This temperature is in Kelvin. Meaning if you double your temperature from 100 Kelvin to 200 Kelvin, you are doubling your kinetic energy. So this is the benefit of the Kelvin scale. So when you want to brain the proportionality, because ratio is your best friend, it's a bit more easier to brain. Alright? So does that mean no? ah. zero Kelvin, zero kinetic energy? No? Yeah, zero, zero. yeah no. then the particle, they just don't move far. But you see, uh, in real life, scientists was not able to chill a gas down to zero Kelvin. I think the coldest zero point zero zero something, and things become very weird when it's that cold. Some superconducting computer happen. Oh yeah, that one. Next time lah, you go and study more physics. You do your own experiment in the lab. Okay. So now, okay. So as I as I mentioned just now, kinetic energy will be proportional to the thermodynamic temperature. Okay. But we also need to have a relationship between the mean square speed and temperature. So you can see from the expression above the black box that T is also proportional to mean square speed. Okay, so T is proportional to mean square speed. I mean, the rest of the things are constant. What? Good news for physics, your gas sample only got one gas. We don't mix the gas. That one is chemistry. We leave it to the chemist. Okay, so this is your mean square speed and it's proportional to... I mean, your mean square speed is equal to this one. Uh. So 3k over m is constant. So v square is proportional to t. Okay? If v square is proportional to t, also at the same time, you need to think about this because sometimes they will trick you. Uh. They will use root mean square. 
Hiya. So root means square means you square root the V square. You root the average that you square last time. Root mean square. You square first thing. Standard deviation, guys. If you do stats, this is standard deviation. So you get this equation, and this is the RMS, root mean square. So your VRMS or your CRMS is proportional to root T. Do not forget the square root. Okay, gentle reminder. This M uh, is mass of one particle. Again, one particle. You don't go and put the gas sample size, sample mass. Uh, I don't know. I cannot help you already at that point. Okay, one. If you want to use the density, then it's the sample, the entire sample. Okay, so right now, you can assume that the average Ke of a gas molecule, which is given by this equation, Ek is 3 over 2, K, K, 3 over 2 Kt, is constant if the temperature of the gas is kept constant. Alright, so we have finally, congratulations, we have related to the speed of the particle to pressure and the speed of the particle to temperature. Good job, Miss Ellie. So let us uh, draw a line somewhere at below because we know in real glasses there's intermolecular forces, okay? So there will be some potential energy, huh? okay, mm -hmm. number three. So because of this, uh, we, I'm going to have to define internal energy, which is the sum of a random distribution. Miss, why random? Uh? Dude, the Ke that I gave you, that equation, uh, is for average. So it's a random, random distri distribution uh, yeah. of the kinetic energy and potential energy because that one is in the bond. Remember chapter 12? The one where we talk about the different states. Okay, potential energies associated with the molecules of a system and also is determined by what state it is in, whether it's in solid, liquid or gas. Okay, however, for ideal gas, we assume the potential energy is zero. So we write equation like internal energy comma u because internal energy is the total ma. So internal energy u is equal to Ke plus Pe. But for ideal gas, there's no bonds, so Pe is zero for ideal gas. So you're going to put PE0 inside your internal energy is also known as Ke. So your U is equal to Ke. And just for ideal gas, because of this relationship, you can steal the relationship of Ke and temperature and say that the internal energy is equal to 3 over 2 Kt. This one is for one molecule. It will be 3 over 2 NKT for the sample. Please read the question. Sometimes they ask for one particle. Sometimes they ask for the whole sample. Normally for internal energy, they ask for the whole sample. Because internal energy of one particle doesn't really make any sense. Okay. So N particles. Yeah. So for N particles, so you're going to use U is equal to 3 over NKT if you're very sure the gas in the question is ideal. All right. And I think the last thing that I want to mention is that this one they like to ask a lot. Explain, explain. This is a very popular explainy question. Okay, so go do your past years and go and uncover them. And then at the same time, this internal energy being related to temperature will be what carries carries us over to the final subtopic, which is the first law of thermodynamics, one of the foundation pieces of our understanding of energy. I and Miss Ellie will see you in that video. Take care.